The last 10 or 15 minutes when you are painting is the most important. This can make or break your painting. So today I'm going to talk about why that is the case, especially in watercolor, and I'm going to give you my three keys to finishing your painting strong. Let's take a look. The end of your painting is such an important part of the process. When you're adding your final bits of detail, when you're adding your darks, when you're trying to bring the whole thing together. In watercolor, there's not a lot of ways to correct your mistakes. So if you put in some darks where they don't belong, it doesn't really work out. We wanna keep our painting as fresh as we possibly can. How do we wanna approach this important part of the process. My first bit of advice that I give when you are finishing your painting is to take a mental break. So up until this point, you have been selecting a subject, you have been drawing, you have been color mixing, and creating your whole painting. Now when we get to the ending of the process, we have decision fatigue. We have had to make so many decisions to get up to this point. I often say get your painting to about 90% and then take a step back. Hey, it's okay. You want to be in the video? No, I'm in it. Yeah. Taking a mental break can help you regain some of that freshness and some clarity. Also, when you've been looking at your painting for a long time, you're too close to it. It's hard to think of it rationally. I can't tell you how many times I've been in this position and I've made a, a hasty decision. You know, I'm getting tired and I'm losing my ability to make those sharp, good decisions. I just try to do the best that I can do in the moment. And sometimes, unfortunately, I have messed up a painting or I've been very disappointed by those decisions. The right approach is check in with yourself. If you're feeling mentally fatigued, give yourself a little bit of a break before you finish your painting. So my next point is ask yourself, did I emphasize the main point of the painting? So a lot of times when we get to the end of the painting process, we need a few little touches to finish the painting. And I like to keep my eye on the focal area. I like to step back from my painting and see how the whole painting is reading together, how it's all working together. Now, when I select a scene, and I know we're talking about finishing the painting, but let's talk about when you pick the scene. Think about why you pick the scene, what's most important to you, and keep this in mind throughout the painting process. So if it's a bit of light on a car, is it the light side of a building, is it a figure, whatever that is, make sure that you're reinforcing that when it comes to the finishing touches of your painting. Remember, we want defining characteristics to be in your focal area, whatever that area is, whatever the most important part of your painting is, that's where you want those characteristics to be. And the other parts of the painting should accent that. So you want a, a clear idea of what the main point is. And when you get to the ending of your painting is when you want to reinforce that. So once you've had a mental break, once you reinforce the focal area, take another step back from your painting. Now, is there any area of your painting that is boring? Sometimes there'll be a wide open area that's all one color that you weren't able to switch it up, you didn't get the amount of interest that you needed in that point. Now you need to be careful because one of the quickest ways to overwork your painting is to just add little additions around your scene without understanding how it's connected or how it's relating to your focal area. So again, keep your focal area in mind, but take a step back. Is there any little area that could use a mark to break up a boring area of the painting? Is there a big area of darks in your scene that could use a little bit of highlight? Is it too late to scratch in a little highlight? You could add a little dash of gouache, a little bit of light to break up a dark area. Same thing goes for a big light area of your painting. So we wanna assess the whole scene and see if there are any boring areas of the scene that just need to be broken up with a shape. And when you are doing this, you can also think about, did I get the light right in the scene? Now we can't go lighter, but we can go darker. And so sometimes I might notice a wash that has dried too light, and I might do a little bit of a glaze over it to, to darken up that area to make sure that my brightest area of, of light is where I want it to be. 
so you can direct the viewer's attention into your scene. Maybe the foreground needs darkened a little bit and keep all that in mind. This is the time to assess your painting, to take a step back and make sure that it is working as a whole. If you can keep these three things in mind, when you come to the finishing part of your painting, the most important part of the painting process, you'll be in position to make good decisions when it comes to finishing your painting. Have you ever been really excited about a painting and you get all set up, you find that right reference that you're excited about, and then it's time to go and you feel lost? You ever had that experience? You just are having a hard time finding consistency. Some of your paintings turn out, some of your paintings don't turn out, and you're not really sure why. Well, I have a free resource that I wanna to give to you today that can help exactly with these problems my five steps to plan a successful watercolor painting. I walk you through the crucial planning phase of your painting that will help you understand what you're going to paint first, second, and third. The planning is really so important, especially in watercolor. This medium is harder to correct. It's so immediate. So having that plan is very important. I send you a PDF that you can download. And the great thing about this is you can have it on your phone, you could print it out, and you can take a look at these crucial planning steps before you start each painting to ensure that you're thinking through these important things as you get started. You can download this right now before you start your next painting. All you have to do is follow this link here and download my five-step guide to planning a successful watercolor painting.